Hello everybody, I want to apologize for my absence. I just started a new job, so I've been busy with that, training and whatnot. I am here today with ACW, American Civil War, Brothers vs. Brothers. I uploaded a video earlier today, uh, without audio. <laughs> you can hear me speaking. I did not realize my uh, mic was not working. <clears throat> Until after I was done, I was like, crap, I really don't want to lose what little content the video had, so I decided, alright, I'll upload it, and then I'll do another one where I will talk about the fact that it didn't work right. So, welcome back. This is the United States of America, the East Coast, specifically, if you did not know. We are playing as the Union, which is the Northern States here, versus the Confederacy, which is the Southern States over here. Now, the Confederacy is kicking my ass out here in the West because I have no army out here. My forces are concentrated here. And the reason why is because at the very beginning of the game, the Confederacy and I were allies. <clears throat> we started out as allies in this game, in the mod. And what happened was England, up here, decided they wanted to retake the colonies. Like, oh, cheerio, we're going to come in with our tea and take over. That's not a very good British accent. I can't really do British. Unless it's like Mary Poppins, you know, like the over-the-top British. Yeah, that's how I do the accent. So, we were fighting against them. We took, uh, what is this? Ardadia. I think this is Newfoundland actually out here. And we took New France and Upper Canada from them. And they don't have any forces really left, so I'm like, alright, screw it. Just gonna leave them alone. And since this is a Civil War game, I was really just trying to get the the beginning out of the way, where it's just me clicking on these buildings to upgrade them all. Which is boring, no one wants to see that. I reached the point I was like, screw it. Let's go to war. So I declared war on the Confederacy and we've been fighting. So far I've had two engagements. The second one you saw, the first one was out here. I wasn't ready. For them to attack, but they ended up attacking me, so I was like, well, damn. And I didn't have the stuff set up for recording. Sadly. So here's the strategic situation. The West is in dire peril. You need to gather a force. Funds are deducted from your treasury. Shut up, woman. And here's the thing. I can send Sheridan out here to attack this army here, which is led by Bragg. Which is what the Fort Bragg army base is named after. <clears throat> Which would then leave this these passes here open for this army to move up and possibly flank my main army here. What? I have Ulysses S. Grant, awesome, who is the 18th president. Yeah, 18th president of the United States of America. I think. If, not, if I'm wrong, correct me. Sitting here in the middle <clears throat> on the road slash train train tracks going from Richmond, Virginia down here to Charleston, South Carolina, north and south. Ooh. How about that? Okay. So and they have a good sized army here. You can see they have a large army here with a lot of cannons. It's gonna be a cannon heavy. Centric. <clears throat> they have an army out here. A few mortars. I am training some troops right now. Not here. Not here. Aha! Here. In Lancaster, Ohio. Got a few forces up there going. Can you move? Can when you move? defending your territory, no, you it's important to know how far enemy armies are able to move. Yeah. We're training some units up here. Uh, a little bit of a navy. Shut up. Only have three ships. Uh, first rate steam frigates. Three of them. I'm going to pair you for $13. <clears throat> I currently have four more ships being built. Because, unhistorically, the southern... I keep saying southern. The Confederacy, if you're not American, and that's what you probably know them as, is the Confederacy have more ships than I do right now. While in the actual Civil War, the Union 
or the northern states had a lot more ships. They had pretty much the entirety of the navy. So they were able to blockade a majority of the southern ports, which kept them from trading, which is what the southern states' big uh, uh, source of income was, was actual trading of cotton and stuff like that. The north was very heavily industrialized, which the south was not, and they couldn't really keep up long run with the north. So we are going to... Orders, Captain. I'm going to go after this force and actually move Sheridan out. Yeah, we're going to take Sheridan west. We can't afford to, <laughs> to lose the west here, so he's going to go that way. And we're going to end the turn here. Yep, see, they're moving up. <laughs> I knew they were going to have that pass. And we are going to lose this battle no matter what I do. We're going to auto resolve it. Whoa, what? We won. How the hell do we win? <laughs> oh, that's funny. State militia. <laughs> oh, man. How bad do you feel, sir? Losing. All right. Take on him. Where to, Captain? Yes, Captain. I'm move Grant up here into this pass to hold that. Um. Ready for action. I don't have any cans, do you? Underway. Gonna give you two fourteen pounders. Watching our enemies. Gonna move you down there. There's the Confederate fleet here. Fourth rate, fourth rate, and a second rate. And we turn to the surrender four for that. My eyes are yours. These guys reach them. Let's see, who do we want to recruit? Ooh, is that Sherman? Yeah, let's get Sherman. Let's see. Actually, come up here. Slavic volunteers. Can you recruit anything good? First Michigan. Michigan volunteers. Militia. Get some more of them. Chicago. Oh, I can't afford it. No, 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 no. Okay. Oh. I thought I crashed. I was going to be very upset. All right. Let's go and enter turn again. And they've attacked us. That's good. I was hoping they would. <clears throat> because they are fortified. That's what the little symbol there shows. Oh, we are not. But by them attacking us, they should come at us. So we'll be able to take up good positions. And let them break themselves against our wall. Plus, we outnumber them. So, it'll be good. This photo here is, that's Grant right there. No, I'm sorry, that's not Grant. Oh my god, forgive me. That is Lee. General Lee. He was offered the position as the leader of the Union Army at the beginning of the war, but he refused because he'd be fighting against his Virginian brothers, which is where he hailed from, Virginia. There's a lot of state loyalty at the time. It's basically, you weren't an American, you were a, a Virginian, a New Yorker, a... Uh, Marylander, before you were an American. Alright, do we have any hills? Yes, yes we do. Awesome. So, what I'm going to do here, where's my heaviest guns? 
So there's gonna be these two 12 pounders here. So you guys are gonna come up here. Put you on the top of the ridge. Make sure there's no ground in front of them so the shells won't hit and skip. Alright, now they should have no trouble shooting over... These cannons should be able to shoot over that, no problem. Um, but... It's gonna be hitting our own infantry, so... Can I... Move forward a little bit. Alright, they'll be able to shoot over there. You guys, I'll go ahead and put you up on the left flank. Well, it's the right flank, actually, as we're looking. Could actually put them all the way back here. Put them there. We'll be able to cover that way, then. Is there a road here? No, it's these logs. Which units are not able to move over. So it looks like we should actually be secure on this flank here. <clears throat> How far can that cannon reach? Well enough. Alright, so he's going to stay there actually. Looks like the majority of their forces ought to come over from this direction. In which case, these 12 pounders, I'll put them here in the trees, give them a little bit of cover. Gonna come forward a little bit. Ooh, there's wolves. <clears throat> the wolves actually shouldn't come out, though. I don't think they can. Alright, so I'm going to double line it. General staff, you're going to come up here. Send you in the woods. And we'll end our deployment. So they are over there. Uh, you four are going to form the front line. You there. Two station in the trees there. Get you some auto fire back on. You're going to go down there. You are going to go there. And you want that side. And you cross the long way around over there. Actually, put you more sword on that flank there. <clears throat> I like to double line like this. Uh, it's not the most effective way to fight because you're not being able to bring all your guns to bear. Because this front line here will be firing, but this back one can't. Because they'll hit their own guys here. What this allows me to do, though, is let's say an opening occurs here and the lot, their line crumbles a little bit. I can move this guy up here, move them in to cover while I flank these guys around, or you can fill in gaps or exploit breaks in their lines. Well, leaving your line intact. And it looks like they actually are not going to be approaching. Maybe they're walking, I can't tell. Here's Braxton Bragg. In all his glory. Who are these? Some dragoons?
All right, in this case, we're gonna go ahead and double, double speed up. <clears throat> Oops, starting to rain now. Man, it must be miserable. And they're they're already tired. Nope, now they're fresh. All right, good. And it looks like they're actually not going to be coming out of their defenses here. Which is a problem for me because... I don't think my guns can reach them. I can't see where their firing line is. Alright. Follow it out this way, watch where it curves over. <clears throat> Dang. Alright. You guys go ahead and limber up. You limber. You're gonna come down there. Y'all are gonna move down. over here. Are they hitting my guys with the cannons? So a few cannon shots go off. Oh, it's these guys shooting. Awesome. All right, so we got them under cannon fire now. So now we got these cannons in place. We'll go and bring up our 12 pounders <clears throat> with these cannons covering. Some fire. I'll try not to move up uh, cannons unless I got other cannons to cover their advance. Looks like they might be moving towards us now because the cannons. Yep. Awesome. Alright, so we forced their hand. They're not going to take them by barment. They're going to come to us. And we have a kill box set up. Let's not have you facing that way, actually. Turn your back a little bit more so you can actually face and fire. Bring you that way a little. Bring you closer behind. Behind cover. Hmm. All right. This armor is actually quite wounded. You can go and line up there. 12 pounders limbered. Alright, you are gonna come down to here. Okay, fine, find a round shot. Alright. Canister. Canister. Alright, so none of them have explosive shells. <coughs> Go ahead and double time it again until they actually get close to uh, close enough for us to engage. In our little pillbox, or whatever you want to call it. Unlumber. You're getting close. Can is getting there. All right. <clears throat> Never underplay the importance of artillery. Oh, people don't use them in uh, multiplayer games. I haven't done any multiplayer games. Ooh! We, <laughs> we got Braxton. Braxton Bragg. <clears throat> we 
because the you know people just sit back and artillery duel. I like to use them though in this because it forces the enemy to move out and bring them after your own forces here. Watch these guys advance. Alright, they're pushing in a pretty solid line here. <clears throat> Watch these New Jersey volunteers. Spread them out a little bit more, get some more guns. These guys here are the. Oh, they're engaging on the right. Extreme range. The left has opened up. Looks like they're going to be pushing in. Uh, I wasn't looking the right spot, so. I messed this formation up a little bit. Very long range fire here. It's good because it's relatively flat. The train's not blocking any of our shots. Southern right here. Oh, these are mounted infantry. <clears throat> so they're not going to be that great soldiers. Firing here in the rain. Have you run behind the artillery before it fires again? Let's see. Can we reach them with the canister? I hate that the line's not very... No, we can't. Oh, shrapnel. Yeah, we can reach them with shrapnel. So have the 12 pounders shoot shrapnel shot. Yeah, that won't do any better. See, this unit here is broken. They're going to retreat back. Our entire line is engaged. The lines are collapsing. How's the canister shot going off, by the way? <clears throat> what it does is it'll explode in the air, and it just rains down like shards of metal or bullets. Let's see. I'm gonna be a little bit better, <clears throat> not as loud. Drop the shots explode. This distance, the fire from our rifles isn't very accurate. We'll look along our front lines here. So you are all firing. Lost the guy there. All right. I want you all. Push. You hold your fire. Let's 
send you out a little bit. Go and pull you back some. <clears throat> In fact, you three are actually going to reform there. Move you up to this tree line here. You're going to form that wall. Over. Oh, were you not firing? Or turns you off, I think. Push you up there. You're gonna push to there. Stay on their heels. Have our cannons cover us as our units advance. Give them a better closing. Uh, Killing distance. These guys are out of route, looks like. The flag was shining. <clears throat> Keep you firing the canister shot for now. Shrapnel shot, my bad. This is canister, that's shrapnel. Closing up with them. Break them there. Alright, so they're routing. And this, uh, these guys here should break in a minute. Broken. Alright, so the enemy is completely routing now. <coughs> Keep laying the fire into them. The more we kill now, the less we have to fight later. What's up here? Ooh! The shot almost took out a lot of them right there. Looks like they were just out of range of them. 12 pounders switch back to round shot. We're gonna have to send units up here after these cavalry. Sheridan's army here is actually pretty light on Cav, as in I have none. <laughs> we have a lot of cans to make up for it. I think Grant's army has three dragoons in it. We're gonna move up to there. Go ahead and double time it. Speed this up a little bit. They're still just running away there. If they're running, they should all be running. Okay, yep, they're all routing. Our forces here are all advancing. We're under cannon fire now. Is that just my guy shooting poorly? Make some re-aim. <clears throat> if you just stop them, toggle fire at will, toggle it on, toggle it off, then on, and then they'll re-re-aim depending on what they can hit. Even most of my infantry back, I shouldn't need them all. In fact, you all, put you all on fire at will, and you will just line up there, cover that gap. It is a choke point. We can use it to our advantage. These guys are probably exhausted. Oh yeah, they're very tired. Eager! 
but very, very tired. I'm just stoked that we got a brag. Get you all your guns to bear on these guys. <clears throat> <laughs> you see how slow they're moving because they're just exhausted. While our forces are all just walking along, trudging. Trudging through the snow. Now, the Civil War was the bloodiest war in American history due to a lot of innovations. One, because the fact that as you can see the way we're fighting, we're still doing line tactics of the later 17th and early 1800s. Now, the reason that these tactics were used originally, where you have all these guys lined up here, like this, is because the guns were so inaccurate. That's the only way you could hit anything, was just a mass folly. So everybody would shoot, and you pray you hit something. Now, in the Civil War, these guns, right here, you see these guys holding, they were, originally, when they would be cast, they'd be smooth bores. So the inside of the barrel is smooth. It's just like a pipe. Now, that doesn't le lend, oh, excuse me, oh, any stabilization to the bullet. So the bullet will fly out, it doesn't have any any spin to it. So it would. Oh god, here they come. Fire! <laughs> I should have stopped earlier. Turn in the face. Turn in the face. You don't fire. Sprint. Actually, get them in there. Charge! Charge the cavalry! I'm coming in there. <laughs> They're just pushing through. Alright, so, what it was is, and also the balls they were shooting were little balls, they were spheres. And that's what they would shoot out of their, uh, their muskets. Well, in the Civil War, most of the weapons that the soldiers carried were rifles. Now, the rifling of a weapon, a gun, is going to be basically grooves cut along the inside of the barrel that basically spin throughout the entirety of the barrel. Uh, the Well, I should say the length of the barrel. And... They switched from using sphere ball, uh, sphere balls, to a mini ball, which is more akin to what we use today. A mini ball wasn't quite a sphere, or whatever. It had a conical end, so a round, uh, flat back, and the front of it was rounded off, sort of like a fatter bullet. And what this did was, when they would fire the gun, the gunpowder would explode behind the bullet, and that explosion would hit the back of the, uh, the bullet and would force it to expand and that would engage the rifling so the bullet's getting pushed through the barrel and it gets a spin from the rifling and flies out at the end well that spinning stabilizes the bullet through the air making the its trajectory more accurate it's not going to go wild it's going to pretty much stay in the direction that you're firing actually just wrecked these cavalry Probably my own troops a little bit too, because they routed. Cowards! We need some commissars up here. If you'll not serve in battle, you'll serve on the fire line. So, end this battle. Heroic victory! <laughs> yeah! Bloody madman! Ooh, what was that achievement? Let's take a look. Take a look. Carve a bloody path to victory. Kill a hundred thousand enemies. <laughs> yeah, buddy. That's right, no mercy. So we lost 332. They lost 931. So almost three for, 
Three to one. Nice. Well done, men. So, we've crushed that army almost completely. Which is good. We need to crush their armies. Oh, they're back. Can these guys do it again? The sea is ours. <laughs> Victory! Get owned, punk! God, those guys have to be embarrassed. I'd be embarrassed to be them. I mean, they're getting their asses kicked. Alright, you built that awesome. Path blocked! What do you mean, path blocked? These ass. Ass hats over here. It's three turns till they surrender. Good. Aye, sir. Grant. Actually, I'd like Grant to come down there. Alright, I'm going to end this episode here. Because uh, that battle took a while. I don't want these videos to get too terribly long. So you all will actually watch them through. Not that you don't. I'm sure you all enjoy hearing me speak and talk about random stuff. Otherwise, why would you be on these videos? I want to figure out some way that I can put a like a two-second intro at the beginning and some sort of outro, like some of the other channels that I watch do. I just I have no idea how to do it. Uh, I need to get like a good channel art, like uh, for Z games or something like that, or something. Figure it out. I might change it from Z games. I don't know. There's other Z games out there. I didn't know that uh, YouTube you could have the same username as other people. I guess it ma doesn't really matter until I guess some of the bigger names. Hmm. Excuse me. So. Ooh, some news. I hit, we hit a uh, hundred, hundred subscribers, the other day. I was super stoked about that. I never really expected to get more than probably three because the people I knew. Um, <laughs> so to get a hundred, actually, it's a pretty good feeling. I mean, there's a hundred people that have liked what I'm doing enough to hit subscribe, which is pretty awesome. Uh, what else was I going to talk about? The Star Wars campaigns for Battlefront Commander, they're dead. The game is not working now. It, uh, the mod, at least. I tried reverting a little bit with the Star Wars uh, Rebellion uh, campaign. And it crashes halfway through a battle at the very end of any battle. It doesn't matter where it's at now. Uh, I tried doing the Mandalorians, as that was requested. And it's doing the exact same thing. It'll crash the very first battle very first few battles. Oh my god, we got our navy. Sweet. You can attack a fleet belonging to another nation. When Shut up. I hate that lady. She talks about everything all the time. Although the age of large scale official bucket Stop it. Just trying to gather my entire navy. All right, so next video, that's what we're going to have. We're going to have ourselves a uh, navy battle. And then we're going to try and crush these forces here, so they cannot save Richmond and Grant and Sheridan. Well, Sheridan's going to keep pushing west. So an experienced unit is less likely to break and run from battle when under stress and fatigue. Or he actually might move down here at the west side of the Appalachians, get down here to Frankfort, Kentucky, and take Nashville, Tennessee, while Grant. It's gonna move it. What? Is it fleet ready? Occupying a port with an army. Shut up. Alright. So try to move him down here. Yeah, so that's about that. Uh I probably forgot to say something or Nope. I don't think so. So if you liked the video, please hit the subscribe button below, like it, watch it all the way through, because it is very enjoyable. I have a few history lessons in here. In case you skip to the end. If you skip to the end, you miss the best part, so you should probably go back and watch the entire thing. And I will see you guys next time.